praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Well, uh, the Lord Jehovah has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah Elohim. The Lord Jehovah El Olam. Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah Bara. Jehovah Mashi. Jehovah Maoz. Jehovah Magen. Jehovah Shazek. Jehovah My Light. Jehovah Eli. Jehovah Elion. Jehovah Ori. Jehovah Ganan. Jehovah Hamelech, the king. Hashofet, the judge, the righteous judge. Jehovah Hosea. Jehovah Goel. Jehovah Yire. Jehovah Sori. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Miskabi, he has spoken with me this past night. And in this conversation, that the Lord had with me this past night. The Lord Jehovah, he took me into deep space. And when he took me into deep space this past night, yesterday at night, he really took me to the end, the end of the universe, the end galaxy of the universe. And that is where the voice of the Lord is speaking from right now. And he spoke from that end. He brought me all the way to the end galaxy. To the galaxy that was really to the end, that stretched to the end. It was really the farthest within the universe. And then the Lord asked me to speak from there. And at that place, the Lord again commanded me to shake the universe, to shake the planet. And there was a tremendous shaking of the galaxies that took place at that site. A very, very massive shaking, and it happened in the same way again as the one that happened on August 17th, the year 2017. In this one that happened on August 17th, the year 2017, when the Lord took me deep into deep space, about 135 million light years away from here, which is trillions upon trillions of miles and kilometers from this, and no man can reach there, humanity will never reach there, but... uh, at that time when he commanded, he commanded me to decree the collision of the two neutron stars, as I lifted up my hand, just my presence there, when I just arrived and then that collision took place, the same thing happened this night. At the end galaxy, it took me to really the extreme end, and then he commanded me to execute this tremendous shaking of that galaxy at that end, and that would shake the whole universe. But while there, just arriving when my presence like this, in executing his command, just my presence, if I lifted up my left prophetic arm, then there was a tremendous shaking that took place in that side, at that end, the deep end, the end galaxy. It's really very far, extremely far. It made me know it's unreachable. It's really far. And I could see that the end, almost like silver lining, there was a this shiny end of the galaxy towards that end. And then there was this very tremendous shaking that took place of the planet. And such are the times we live in. What manner of days than these are that we live in? Surely these are the days of his glory, the days of his servant. And so there is going to be a tremendous shaking of the heavens above. The God of heaven is going to shake the heavens with tremendous power, unbelievable power, unfathomable power, power that 
cannot be perceived in this life, cannot be understood in this life. And this is going to be such a tremendous wonder at this time in the dispensation that we have reached in, the dispensation that the earth has stumbled into. And so there's going to be a tremendous shaking of the heavens above the earth. And this is going to be much bigger shaking. It is almost similar to the recent prophecy I gave after this shaking of August 17th when he took me and he asked me to lift up my left prophetic arm and strike that complete galaxy which was more to the left. Then I saw the tumbling of planets. It was a, a very fearful moment to behold when a galaxy, almost the entire galaxy, came down in a very shocking episode that shook the whole universe in a way never before. But why is this happening at this hour, beloved people? The Messiah is coming. The Lord is using this to prepare the way for the glorious kingdom of God, the eternal kingdom of heaven, the unshakable kingdom of heaven. And I am reading now from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. From verse 25, he says, See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. It starts from verse 24, if you want to understand he that speaks. Verse, uh, let's start from verse 22 for better understanding for all people. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of the righteous made perfect. Verse 24, he says, To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, I repeat, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to the thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, he says, whose name are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of the righteous made perfect, then verse 24, beloved, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Now, verse 25 is key. He says, see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him, who wants them on earth? How much less will we if we turn away from him who wants us from heaven? Verse 26 says, At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Verse 27 he says, The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created thing, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire, the unshakable God of the unshakable kingdom. So, beloved people, 
the glorious unshakable kingdom of God is at hand. It is in hand. And the person of the Holy Spirit sat before me and he spoke with me and he said, the coming of the kingdom of God is in hand. Beloved people, this is a tremendous historic time in the history of the church, in the life of the church. And now you can see that the Lord God Almighty is seeking reverence from the church. He is now making it very clear that there is an eternal unshakable kingdom that is coming and is fulfilling the shaking of the heavenly powers even as he promised in the book of Joel and in the book of Luke 21 verse 26. So this prophecy, in this prophecy he took me to the extreme. He took me to the end galaxy, to the end of the universe. It's unbelievable, tremendous place to be. And in this end galaxy, I can give more detail. There was less oxygen at that place. So, even as I was breathing, I realized that the oxygen was less at that end. He made me know that there was less oxygen at that end. And he is coming to shake the universe again. The voice of the Lord is in the heavenlies. The voice of the Lord is in the sky. The voice of the Lord is in deep space. And he made me know that beyond the universe, there is the other space outside the universe. So you can imagine for yourself how humongous, how huge, how big, how superior, how supreme, how large, how how mighty, how enormous our God Jehovah is. He is not your elder brother. His name is Jehovah Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Kabodi, Jehovah Sori, Jehovah Yasha, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Hamelek, Jehovah Bara, Magen, Maoz, Mashi, Mefalti, Jehovah Miskabi. He is not your elder brother. He is the Lord God Almighty, the dreadful and the terrible God of Israel. He is a big God. If the universe can be, be this big and he created, how big is Jehovah? Jehovah is different from all these funny little idol gods you see being worshipped on the earth. He has now established that only he, Jehovah, is God. Only he that uh, can shake the universe is worthy of worship. He alone is God. And there are bigger planets out there than the earth. So surely it's a big privilege that he has chosen us to worship him. So let us prepare the way, beloved people, in absolute reverence. And let us now have the correct view of God. That the Lord God Almighty is so enormous, he is so big, he is so powerful. And for him, even to allow us to worship him in this kind of condescendence you see on the earth here, is absolute privilege and mercy. I have seen the Messiah coming, beloved people, and there was limited oxygen at the end, the end galaxy, and so many trillions of planets over there. The end galaxy is where even science has not discovered. Even astrophysicists have not yet discovered. The astronomers have not yet been able to see. So he took me to the end, and the oxygen was less. So I was breathing with a little bit of difficulty at that end. And he wanted me to know that there is less oxygen at that side. So, beloved people, the Messiah is coming. This is he about whom the Bible promised. The Bible wrote and promised that he would send the mighty messenger, the mightiest prophet, that will come and shake things and bring down the mountains and flatten all those things that are created, that exalt themselves above Christ and prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. This is he about whom it was written that he would send an angel to lead you to the promise and that this angel would not accept your condescendence, would not accept your apostasy and blackmail, that those that would listen to him 
actually would see the glorious eternal kingdom of peace, the kingdom of glory, the kingdom of Jehovah, the new Jerusalem. Now, um, in this conversation that the Lord has had with me this past night, the voice of the Lord is in the deep space, and uh, I can now share the second part of that conversation. In the second part of that conversation, as the Lord took me deep into the end universe, the end of the universe, the end galaxies of the universe, the end, uni- the end universe, the end of the universe. And at that place, I can now reveal that the glory of the Lord, the cloud of the Lord, was there with me. And as the Lord was instructing me, his cloud was hovering all over the place, all over he that speaks with you. Again, I can now bring this to your attention. In the first conversation, when the Lord took me to the galaxy that was more to the left, at that time, also the cloud of his glory was all over he that speaks with you now and speaking to him by voice and instructing him at that place. But this night also, now the Lord has allowed me to reveal this second phase. Um, At the end galaxy where the Lord took me to this past night, the night before this one, yesterday night, the end of the universe, it was indeed the end, there was limited oxygen there, there is limited oxygen. However, even as the Lord was instructing me, his cloud was hovering all over that place and covering he that speaks with you, his mighty prophet, deep into deep space at the end space. And he made me know that humanity has not discovered yet. They have not yet discovered that end. That is deep space. They cannot see that end. That is too far away. They will never see But anyway, at that point, the cloud of the Lord, is the cloud of his glory was hovering all over that place as he instructed me to execute the command of heaven. So these are the tremendous fearful days of the Lord, the days of his servant. These are the days when the Lord has come out in full power to establish that he alone is God and that the Messiah is coming and coming with great power and glory and force. He's coming as a triumphant king. But before he comes, you can see now there's so much shaking going. And if the preparing of the way for the glorious coming of the king, the Messiah, is with such enormous power. Then how much more power does the coming, the glorious coming of the Messiah behold? So so this is a wonderful opportunity for this generation. You are the blessed generation that can prepare the way and usher in the Messiah and receive the Messiah and enter eternity. Shalom. May those who have ears listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, um, in this conversation that the Lord has had with me this past night, the voice of the Lord is in the deep space, and uh, I can now share the second part of that conversation. In the second part of that conversation, as the Lord took me deep into the end universe, the end of the universe, the end 
galaxies of the universe, the end, uni- the end universe, the end of the universe, and at that place, I can now reveal that the glory of the Lord, the cloud of the Lord, was there with me. And as the Lord was instructing me, his cloud was hovering all over the place, all over he that speaks with you. Again, I can now bring this to your attention. In the first conversation, when the Lord took me to the galaxy that was more to the left, at that time, also the cloud of his glory was all over he that speaks with you now and speaking to him by voice and instructing him at that place. But this night also, now the Lord has allowed me to reveal this second phase. Um, At the end galaxy where the Lord took me to this past night, the night before this one, yesterday night, the end of the universe, it was indeed the end, there was limited oxygen there, there is limited oxygen. However, even as the Lord was instructing me, his cloud was hovering all over that place and covering he that speaks with you, his mighty prophet, deep into deep space at the end space. And he made me know that humanity has not discovered yet. They have not yet discovered that end. That is deep space. They cannot see that end. That is too far away. They will never see But anyway, at that point, the cloud of the Lord, is the cloud of his glory was hovering all over that place as he instructed me to execute the command of heaven. So these are the tremendous fearful days of the Lord, the days of his servant. These are the days when the Lord has come out in full power to establish that he alone is God and that the Messiah is coming and coming with great power and glory and force. He's coming as a triumphant king. But before he comes, you can see now there's so much shaking going. And if the preparing of the way for the glorious coming of the king, the Messiah, is with such enormous power, then how much more power does the coming, the glorious coming of the Messiah behold? So so this is a wonderful opportunity for this generation. You are the blessed generation that can prepare the way and usher in the Messiah and receive the Messiah and enter eternity. Shalom. May those who have ears listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen.